Well, we're still in the book of Numbers, and we've gone to uh, Numbers chapter 33. And uh, I think one of the things that brings incredible credibility to the Bible is the number of people, places, and historical events are recorded that can be verified. And we, here we have a summary of after the Passover, uh, the leaving of Egypt, and the number of places where the Israelis journeyed to. And uh, as we watch that retracing of the, of the Israelis leaving Egypt, uh, we find the credibility of all of the places that they traveled to and uh, that they were in. We find in verses 38 and 39, Aaron dying. Uh, we have that historical event recorded for us. In verses 40 through 49, the travels continue and we can trace them on the map. Uh, in verses 50 and 51, we find God speaking to Moses to tell the people what he expects of them after they cross over the Jordan. Now, he doesn't say, if you cross over the Jordan. Uh, he tells Moses when the people cross over the Jordan. And it says they're to drive out the inhabitants. They're to destroy the idols in the high places. All of those things that would influence them to drift away from God. Live in the land that I gave you, he says, and divide the land up proportionately to all of the tribes. God is a God of justice and mercy and kindness and fairness. And here we find that he continually follows those rules in his own decisions and dividing up the land proportionately. But there's something that I want to dwell on today, and that's found in verses 52 and 53. Uh, and it's consummated in verses 55 and 56. If you do not drive out the inhabitants, there'll be a thorn in your side forever. Now, let's just think about that for a minute. I want you to think about the ways that you may not drive the Canaanites out of your life. Temper, uh, lust, stubbornness, how you treat your mate, how you raise your children. If you recognize that there's some errors in your life, no matter how small they seem to be, a little bit of temper, a little bit of laziness, a little bit of lust, a little bit of stubbornness, a little bit of treating your spouse incorrectly and the way you talk to your spouse. Uh, the stubbornness that you have uh, without really asking what God would have you to do. And how you raise your children. Oh, I can't tell you how many times uh, I've thought back on those errors that I've made and some of the Canaanites that I left in my own life and how they came back to be a thorn in my flesh. Uh, and I wonder if you could be honest today, too, just to take a minute and bow your head right where you are and say to yourself, uh, where do I fall short of the glory of God? What are the areas where I have some Canaanites still in my land and that I've not driven them out and they've become a thorn in my flesh? Well, it's not too late to drive them out. It's not too late to establish proper habits. It's not too late to change some of your ways and make them more godly. Uh, I think that it's a shame when a Christian doesn't become better as they get older, uh, that they allow the Lord to continue to work and mold and make them into what they need to be. Uh, I think that all of us could take a moment today to think about verses 55 and 56 if we don't drive out the Canaanites, those little things in our lives that will keep us from having God's best. Uh, then we're making a terrible mistake. Uh, I think it's a good idea periodically to have a good self-assessment of our lives. Uh, a number of years ago, we were on a retreat in Titusville, Florida, and they gave us a heart-searching paper uh, that we were supposed to look at and answer the questions. 
in light of Scripture in our lives and how they measured up the Scripture. Uh, we thought we'd take 15 or 20 minutes and then go down by the pool. <laughs> well, the 15 minutes turned into hours of recognizing how far we fell short of the Lord and how many things really needed to be cleaned up in our lives. And we spent the most of the afternoon uh, going back through that heart searching and prayer. I think it's a good exercise for all of us to take a look at those little Canaanites. They may seem weak, they may seem insignificant, uh, but they'll be a thorn in our side for the rest of our lives. And unfortunately, they'll grow in strength and we'll lose what God wants for our lives and we'll miss out on the best of our lives because God only wants the best. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day. How can you be sure you're going to heaven? My son said I should never end a message without telling people how they can be sure they're going to heaven. You can find it easily in just a few verses in the book of Romans. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin is anything that's displeasing to God. We all sin every day. By unclean thoughts, a quick answer to someone that's inappropriate, uh, whatever it might be, we all sin and we all fall short of the glory of God. And we know that the wages of sin are death. Romans 6.23 tells us that clearly. The wages of sin are death. We're all guilty of sin and we all deserve death. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, God demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's it. That's, that's exactly how God showed his love. He allowed us to see that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, died for us and rose again to prove that he had the power over death. Now watch this. How do we obtain this? It's one thing to know it. You can have it here in your head, but not down in your heart. You know, here's how we obtain it. If we confess and believe in our heart, God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. And it says believing it's considered righteousness, not our own righteousness, but Christ's righteousness. With our mouth, we confess. And it says, and, and when we confess, it results in salvation. In verse 13, it goes on and says, whoever will call upon the Lord shall be saved. So if you've confessed your sin, said, yes, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I know that you died for my sins. I'm going to turn from sin and self and to you and to you alone then you can know for certain if you really meant it, really meant it, then you know that you have eternal life in heaven. I hope that you've prayed a prayer similar to that, that you've acknowledged Christ as your Savior, that you've invited him into your life to be your Lord and your Master, that you've turned from sin and self and received him to be the Lord of your life. And that's my prayer for you. Remember, at the end of this clip, there's an opportunity for you to see the last lesson that we had, and also a clip that says how you can have peace in a broken world with the three circle illustration. It's a wonderful witnessing tool to share with others if they don't know Christ as Savior and to see how God fixed a broken world. God bless you and have a great day.